by far the most sophisticated and complex function in either Excel or Google Sheets is called the query function. It allows you to return a table based on an input data source, which is normally another table in Google Sheets, and you can write SQL-like code to get the answer. Uh, filtering is probably the most useful case, and although I have another video where I talk about dynamic arrays in general in Google Sheets, query is the most sophisticated one. If you like this video, then I have plenty more on Excel, Google Sheets, Power BI, PowerPoint, Teams, Zoom, etc. Feel free to check out on my channel for more videos. Google Sheets has an amazing function called filter, which allows it to return the columns based on a filter criteria. And it's dynamic, so if this changes to Manchester, that would also update. However, as great as there is, there are two major limitations. Firstly, the headers do not come in, so the only way to get them in is to manually copy and paste, which seems very undynamic. And the second thing is that you can only return the columns in the same order as they are in the source. And that is why I love the query function. In fact, query function does a lot of things as we'll cover in this video, but the thing I love the most is using it for this purpose. So it has three inputs, data, comma, query, comma, headers. Uh, headers is optional, so I'm going to leave that blank for now, but I'll come back to it later on. So data is just the source data, and the magic happens in query. So here you have to put speech marks around a statement which you say. It uses SQL-like language. It's actually called Google Visualization API Query Language, but um, even if you don't know any of those languages, I didn't before I started using Query. It's not very difficult to learn, especially to do this simple thing. So I'm going to write select, and then I can specify the columns that I like, D, B, comma, E. And then I close my speech marks, close my brackets. And as you can see, I get the same columns there, just in a different order. And most importantly, my headers have come up. And now let's do the same thing, but this time we'll apply a filter, or how query calls it is a where clause. So this is the data, comma, query, speech marks, always, select D, comma, B, comma, E, where, and then I'm going to say D equals single quotations now. I know that you're used to double quotations, but they go around the whole query statement. So that gives me these two. Notice how there is a spelling error there, so it didn't pick it up, but it's dynamic. So if this changes to London, it will go out of this list, but into this list. Uh, one thing to note is that it is case sensitive. So if that's a small L, it does not work. Query allows a lot more. So you could say equals query this one select star, and that means select all the columns in the same order, where, and then you could say D contains apostrophes landa, because you see I have that spelling error from before. So then I'm going to close my brackets, and that will include even the ones with landa. Data handled a little bit differently in a special way. So you would say equals query. This is the data. And then I could say select star. I mean, select all columns where E is greater than, and then you have to write the word date to specify what you're doing. And you need to make sure that you write dates in single quotations in the format of year, with four digits, then a dash, then month, then day. So it needs to be YYYY-MM-DD. And then we have our criteria. So if you write equals query, and then select your data like that, comma, select B comma D comma E, where and then you open a bracket to give an AND clause. So let's say where B is equal to single quotes there and 
e is greater than 1000. So let me close my brackets for the and clause and then close my speech marks, close my main bracket and I have it showing like this. So it's omitting this bear value because that is less than a thousand. However, I can then say or, and now I do a brackets where place which is in column D equals and then single quotes Liverpool. Close my brackets for the or function, close my double speech marks, and then I have the Liverpool ones appearing there as well. Another really useful way you can use this is to have it linked to a cell. So here it's even a drop down where the user can choose what he needs to. So let's go through how to do that. First, let's create the, the drop down list. Click on a blank cell, data, data validation, and then we're going to choose a list from here. What's great about Google Sheets is that it automatically knows the duplicates and only keeps the unique values, which Excel doesn't do. I love that. So once you've done that, we're going to do our query function equals query, select our data, and then I'm going to say speech marks select B comma E where B equals. And then I need to put in a single apostrophe, then a double speech marks, then use the and symbol and then refer to the cell and then use the and symbol again and then do the opposite. So then open up your speech marks, click your apostrophe, and then actually close your speech marks again, press the close parentheses and you have it there. So I'll explain why I'm doing that. Uh, essentially, if we had the word T in here, it would, if I cut that, it would look like this. Right, this is what we learned before. So you wrap it inside apostrophes or single quotations. However, if you're going to refer to a cell, you need to tell query function that you are leaving the regular query annotation. And to do that, you see how these turn black. That means that we are now no longer in a query function. In normal Excel, then use the and symbol to refer to another piece of text that you can catenate together. And then we go back into it with the and again. But then to go back into the regular query, we need these two to turn green. So we would use another quotation there. And then we're effectively doing the apostrophe or the single quotation and then double quotation just to end the statement. A more sophisticated version of what I've just shown you is this. So this queries a set of data where the user can choose parameters. So they can choose from a date picker this is done with data validation and choose these drop downs as they go along uh, and then choose the columns. So here is the codes for the columns in case they forget and they can reorder them. So like that as they choose. Uh, this does get summed on top. This is a normal sum just in case there is a numerical column. Otherwise, it will say zero. Uh, the way that it works, these are data validation. Then here is code for each of them and it's blank if there is nothing selected and then here is the query that is saying well what do you say select and this where text join and then it combines all of these together in a certain way to make it work with this parameter label allows you to give new headers for different columns so you could say equals query and then select star, so all, label, and then I could say B is going to be single quotations, drink, and then comma, C, and then single quotations, date. Close my single, then my double quotations, and I get it looking like that. Limit allows you to specify a maximum number of rows that can be returned. So you could say equals query and then select star limit five. And then it will return only the top five rows like this. 
You can also do it the other way around with offsets, and then we'll do them both together. So you could write, for example, here equals query, select this data, comma, and then write select star offset 11. Close your speech marks and close your brackets, and you get that. So it's offset it 11 rows from the top, but it keeps the headers. And here you could say equals query, select your data, select star limit three offset six, close your speech marks, close your brackets, and you get it showing like that. I love the ability in Google Sheets to be able to stack two tables together like this one and this one. So you can, in Google Sheets, use this notation. If you put two ranges in curly brackets separated by a semicolon, omit the headers from the second one, then it does give you that data set. However, you quickly run into limitations because if you want it to be dynamic, so you include a few blank rows later on, you just get that, which is not very, very useful. And that's where query comes in. You could say equals query, and then I'm going to say the same thing. So curly brackets, and I'm going to say this, give it some space to grow. Semicolon, again, some space to grow. And then my query is select call one, where And my query says, select star, which means all, where call one is equal to And then my query says, select star, which is everything, where call one is not null. Close your speech marks, close your brackets, and then it works like that. And notice that if you add something new, then that gets added because now it's not null anymore. Now this is slightly different notation than we've used before, but this is what I've gotten from personal experience. So select star means everything. Call one, you would ask, why don't I use A? Well, A just doesn't work. Call one means the first column in the range, call two, call three, call four. It is case sensitive, so capital C, lowercase everything else. And then is not null is the way that you say that it isn't blank. So this is just the way that query takes the language for it. You also have the last input, which is whether to use headers or not. So if you press zero, then it doesn't give you the headers. Uh, if you press one, it gives you one row of headers, two will keep two row of headers, etc. I usually leave it blank uh, because most of my data looks like this, but if you want to hard code the one, that's not a bad idea. Order by, so you could say equals query. I want to select all of this data and I could say select E comma B order by E and then descend in. Close my switch marks, close my brackets, and then I get that ordered by the units descending. The alternative is ASC for ascending, like that. You can also group by, and this is kind of like a one dimensional pivot table. You could say equals query with all of this data. And then you could say, select B comma sum E group by B. So what that will do is it writes the word sum in lowercase annoyingly, <laughs> but it will then give you the sum of beer, the sum of juice, tea, etc. As I said, same as a pivot table. So if I was to select this and go to data pivot table and in an existing sheet over here, I could say I want to add the products and the values are going to be units and that's sum. And you can see it's the same numbers. 
So again, this is dynamic. So if anything changes, that changes in both because in Google Sheets, pivot tables are also dynamic. Now I used here some, I could also use AVG for average. Uh, you could use max min as well. And you can also have a two dimensional pivot table and I'll show you that in a sec. We can also create a two dimensional pivot. So let's do this first with a pivot table and then we'll do it with the query function. So let's start by putting it here. And then let's say I want to see product and place and values. I'm going to say units, that's going to be a sum. That's fine. So I'm going to recreate this with a query function equals query. This is the data. Speech marks select B and then some E group by B pivot D. Close your speech marks, close your brackets, and then you get effectively that without the grand totals. You can also format some cells. So for example, let me take this one, copy that. And here I'm going to paste it and I'm going to go back here and say as well, format function. And I'm going to format average E as single quotations, dollar sign, and then just these sort of numbers with a zero actually, and then end single quotations, let's put a comma as well. And there you go. So it gives it to you with that number format. Some other text transformations and dates are shown here, for example, upper or lower casing, uh, date transformations, you can subtract dates and use now for the current date time. You can aggregate using group by or pivots with these some counts min max average. And what is important is the clause order of how you do these things. So you have to do them in this specific order, otherwise it just returns an error. So if you say, for example, select DB order by F where G is equal to UK, that will not work because it's not following the specific pre-specified order. And if you like that, then please feel free to click the like button. I know it was long, but I didn't want to make this a complete guide. Uh, I may not have covered everything, everything, everything you can do, but close to. Uh, feel free to click the subscribe button if you want more similar videos on Excel, Google Sheets, Power BI, PowerPoint, Zoom Teams, etc. Thanks for watching.